Another letter dated 8 May reached the committee from Mon Butch. In it, the plight of the refugee families was described in extremely lamentable terms, prompting the committee to send the priest Khachatur Pohitian and a certain Dikran Zaragyan to Monboj and Ba with a sum of, uh, of 30 liras sometime after 15 May. Father Bohigyan, while testifying to the refugees' healthy moral demeanor, underscored the, interest, the urgency of food especially. It is true that the local governments in both districts, quote unquote, deserve praise for their caring. Nevertheless, the amount of money allocated from the provincial government is hardly considered enough for one or two weeks if successive assistance does not continue, end of quote. Overall, the Zaytun and Fernuz refugees at Munboch expressed satisfaction towards the local Cherkes population as well as the district governor. Zahigyan likewise oversaw the inoculation of children. Speaking of spiritual catering, the committee resolved to assign the most suitable priest staying behind in Aleppo to their <coughs> scattered flocks. Father Baham Manukyan of Hajin was the first to be sent out to Bab. After reading with satisfaction Father Manukyan's 28 June letter from his new post, the committee decided to send with refugee convoys heading to various destinations a select number of capable, financially secure, and presentable Nergayanali, refugees who could manage communal affairs and act as liaison with the local administrations. Idlib was another district that received Armenians. By 5 May, some 110 refugee families had arrived there, of which 30 had been sent to Hama, <coughs> one of the largest cities in Syria. Uh, another 30 had been scheduled to go to Riha. 20 had been hosted by the local Greek Orthodox community, and the balance had been transferred to Inns. The committee decided to ask for the provincial government, governor's assistance as well as to send Father Hovannes at Mekjan, pharmacist Iskender Akhacheryan, and a certain Riskalla Markosian to Idlib on a fact-finding mission and tip to distribute 50 liras. Upon his return, the delegation submitted the report dated 24 May detailing its findings. The refugees at Idlib, all from St. Tom, numbered 45 families or 195 persons, approximately half of whom have been placed in suitable homes by the government, and the other half lived in Pirinj Khan, or Inn. The Greek Orthodox community had demonstrated extreme compassion, and accordingly their priest, Georgis, and Ilyas Rannoum, a member of the Municipal Administrative Council, deserved special thanks. Unfortunately, however, due to the unhealthiness of potable water, many of Many refugees suffered from dysentery and diarrhea. Ubiquitous mosquitoes added to the discomfort by causing itching and fever. The lack of adequate quantities of quinine prevented the delegation from curing all those who suffered, and the local government was reportedly out of supplies. The delegation thought that the refugees in Italy could lead a reasonably comfortable life should the following measures be adopted. First, Adequate quantities of quinine must be sent there. Second, mosquito deterrence must be made available, but more important, a health official must tell the refugees to drink boiled water, a recommendation that the refugees were not very enthusiastic about because of the expense that fuel would thus incur. Third, the refugees could earn their livelihood if granted permission to move about freely <coughs> together with their animals to work in their nearby villages and the fields. The district governor, however, was reluctant to oblige without authorization from the provincial government. Similarly, since the government distributed relief only to 23 refugee families, arguing that the rest did not need help because they were financially better off, the delegation found the reality to be otherwise and accordingly urged the Kaimakam, or the governor, local governor, to assist all the refugees without exception, which he promised, but what, we don't know what happened. Now, viability, report, viability report and statistics. The prelacy records also contain a brief account dated 20 June 1915 of some five actual and or potential settlement sites within Aleppo province. Its purpose was to examine the viability of those localities in terms of livability. Idlib, the first district to be assessed, 
stood at a 10-hour caravan distance. Although 95% of the population was Muslim, they were, compared with others elsewhere, not fanatical, especially in their relation with the remaining 5% Greek Orthodox Arabs. There was also a tendency among some segments of society to become Europeanized, as attested by their lifestyle and clothing. Uh, in such a milieu, the Armenians could live very well. It behooved the Armenian authorities in Aleppo, therefore, to direct a large number of refugees to this district, where good prospects for businessmen, craftsmen, cultivators, and herders existed. Situated to the southwest of Aleppo at a 16-hour distance by animals, uh, the district of Marra, or Marra, the nomad, its full name, ranked second in preference. It was described as an extensive, partially desert flat area whose inhabitants appeared more backward than those at Idlib. A kind elderly man named Nevruz Pasha controlled tightly the entire area. He showed special respect towards the Armenians, was extremely hospitable, and could be won over so that we could have our cultivators placed in his villages. Given the nice climate and water, as well as the fertile soil, quote, any Armenian who lands here does not lose his real self and identity. He finds bread to eat, which is the most important thing for us in the present, end of quote. Located at a distance of 16 hours from Aleppo via Idlib, Jusser Shugur, although ranked third, held a special place in the reporter's perception. The reason was because the district encompassed the mountains Armenian enclave of Kessa. Are there Kessaps here? No? How come? <laughs> At the same time, however, the Arabic-speaking Armenian hamlet of Kanaye, or Ganiye, having embraced the Latin or Catholic rite, had lost its ethnic identity, whereas Yakubiye, another Arabic-speaking Armenian village, could still be saved from assimilation. These and others are small villages uh, situated between Aleppo and Kessa in the north of Syria. At any rate, the north to east running Orontes River with a tributary called Abu irrigated parts of the district where there were many olive groves. As for the district inhabitants, they were very ignorant, a characteristic that we can take advantage of. Last but not least, the refugees could engage in tannery thanks to the abundance of goats. In terms of agriculture and artisanship, the district of Bab could not match the above places and its four rank. Bab, which could be reached in four hours from Aleppo in a northeasterly direction, was nearly devoid of elevations and its air and water, like the native themselves, were mediocre. Notwithstanding, the district governor was very well disposed towards the Armenian. Munboch, situated at a distance of 16 hours to the northeast of Aleppo, constituted the fifth and last district mentioned in the report. Although the weather was quite nice and the Euphrates River irrigated certain areas and quenched thirst, other parts suffered from lack of water. The territory beyond the Euphrates lay in wilderness with a partially Christian-hating Cherkes population. Animal husbandry and prime quality fat extraction, Arabian horse trade, and cotton production afforded possible job opportunities. The report concluded that, despite the existing crude environment, where agriculture does not recognize anything but wheat and barley, people could make a living with hard work. Also included in the viability report are statistics regarding the refugees found in some of the settlements. Now, the word found used in the various subheadings ought to be understood as arrived for the specific dates associated with the presence of refugees in particular locations leave the strong impression that those dates must have denoted arrival dates. The counts, which also included the names of heads of households, cover the period from 5 May to 24 July 1915, during which 1,223 families, or 7,315 persons, reached six locations, namely Bab, Mumbuj, Idlib, Friha, Maara, and Hama. Uh, 